With the release of the supplementary Magic the Gathering expansion Battle Bond came the latest card in one of Magic's longest running cycles. This card is called Brightling. A white mythic rare, Brightling costs 1 generic and 2 white mana, is a 3-3, and has a wall of activated abilities. You can pay 1 white mana to give Brightling Vigilance, Lifelink, or return it to its owner's hand. You can also pay 1 generic mana to give it plus 1 minus 1 or minus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. It is a shapeshifter creature, which, spoiler alert, they all are. This is the kind of card that is loved by many, because it's so versatile. It can attack, it can block, and it can protect itself. It's almost like a planeswalker. Let's start by comparing Brightling to other mythic rares with the same exact mana cost. One other card is Sanctum Prelate from Conspiracy Take the Crown. This isn't a great comparison because it's a strict control card. You get a 2-2 and choose a mana cost that prevents players from casting non-creature spells with that mana cost. One of the actually comparable cards is Brimaz, King of Oreskos. It is even more aggressive as a 3-4 with Vigilance. It also makes a 1-1 token with Vigilance that attacks with it and blocks with it. Much like Brightling, it attacks and blocks well, but it has no way of saving itself from a removal spell or gaining life. It does make a lot of tokens, and its power is limited by the fact that it is legendary. The other similar card is Transcendent Master. It starts out as a 3-3 and can level up for one generic mana. After dumping 6 mana into it, it becomes a 6-6 with lifelink, and after 12 mana, it also gains Indestructible. This is a fine card that grows over time, but it requires a massive investment. Despite this, it can't both attack and block, and it requires more upfront mana in order to be worthwhile. While both of these cards are good, Brightling is certainly more versatile. Brimaz is the best choice for a deck where you want to spend all of your mana on more creatures, but Brightling is nice if you think you will have some spare mana up. So obviously Brightling is a pretty good card. Maybe not for Vintage and Legacy, but possibly for Commander and most likely for Cube. But it's not the first card like this. There were four previous cards in this cycle, and we're going to go through them all quickly. It started out with a blue card, way back in Urza's Saga in 1998. For 3 generic and 2 blue, you get a 3-3. It had 5 abilities, but essentially it was 4, like Brightling, since Brightling combines the last 2 into one single ability. For a single blue mana, you can untap Morphling, give it flying until end of turn, or give it shroud until end of turn. For a single generic mana, you can give it plus 1 minus 1 or minus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. The modern version of the cycle began in Planar Chaos in 2007 with Torchling. Torchling was also a 3-3, for 3 generic and 2 red. It included that same plus 1 minus 1 or minus 1 plus 1 for 1 colorless mana ability, or you could pay a red mana to untap it, make a creature block it, or change the target of a spell that targets only Torchling. The next card in this cycle was Thornling, printed in Conflux in 2009. This is the green card in the cycle, and it's a 4-4 for 3 generic and 2 green mana. It has 5 printed abilities, but much like Morphling, that is because the buffing abilities are separated. For a green mana, Thornling can gain haste, gain trample, or gain indestructible. And then of course the stats change in ability that cost one generic mana. Aetherling came next in Dragon's Maze, released in 2013. It cost four generic and two blue mana for a 4-5. This card had four abilities printed on it, but like Morphling, the last two abilities give the creature plus one minus one or minus one plus one for one generic mana. So really this card only has 3 abilities, compared to the 4 of Brightling and Torchling. For 1 blue mana, you can exile Aetherling and return it to the battlefield at the end step, or you can make it unblockable. And now in Battle Bond, we return to Brightling. And that's where the cycle currently ends. In 20 years, there have been 5 Lings printed, with the black one remaining and 2 blue ones existing. So here we are with 5 of the most versatile creatures in all of Magic. But as great as these cards are, they weren't an immediate hit. While Morphling seems like it would have been an all-star standard format creature back in 1998 when creatures weren't as good as they are today, it had the misfortune of coming out in the Urza's Saga set. This block had some absolutely broken cards. Free Artifacts, Tolarian Academy, Memory Jar, Yogmoth's Bargain, Replenish. It wasn't until Bannings took care of these cards that creatures like Morphling really started to come into their own. Extended is where it really started making a name for itself in the Mayor Oath deck. The deck played one copy each of Spike Feeder, Spike Weaver, and Morphling. It was a big finisher, meant to be played for free off of Oath of Druids. Since it was cast for free, you always had mana up to protect it and to pump it. 
The next deck Morphling found itself in was Accelerated Blue in Standard. This deck used Grim Monolith to ramp out huge blue threats early, and Morphling was the most reliable win condition. The card started being used in some formats as the best big flyer. It may not be incredible by today's standards for creatures, but this was from a time when most creatures were lackluster compared to spells. The 2003 article All-Time MVPs Morphling on the Wizards website says, Morphling has no true successor. It is an immortal king of magic. It is unlikely that we will ever see a genuine reinterpretation of Morphling that is anywhere near the same power level. It was referred to as Superman, partly due to its long list of abilities and partly due to its sheer power level. We have seen a lot of quote-unquote genuine reinterpretations of Morphling over the years, followed by Torchling in 2007. Unfortunately, this card didn't have quite the impact. I couldn't find any records of decks this was in or tournaments it helped win. A comment on Gatherer sums up this card pretty well and references one of the abilities. No one will even target this thing. As a 5-mana beater, Torchling was outclassed by other much better red creatures. Instead of having evasion, it could force creatures to block it, making it almost like a really expensive removal spell. And this lack of evasion is quite possibly the main reason Torchling didn't see any play. In the end, its greatest fault was that it simply wasn't blue, although this card gets a bit of a pass because it was in Planar Chaos. This set was meant to take existing magic cards and shift them. Here we see a red shifted blue card and it doesn't work out in the best way. Thornling seems to have seen no major play, although it can still be found as a one-of in some fringe modern decks. It received a lot of criticism for a number of reasons. Firstly, haste is only relevant the turn Thornling enters the battlefield, but you need to cast him off the regular curve. A 4-4 for 6 with haste is not the most exciting creature. This was also one of the earliest cards to use the indestructible keyword, and there was a lot of confusion around it at the time. The biggest gripe was actually with the art. While Kev Walker's art is always great, the art did not feel right. While every Morphling variant features a mirrored shapeshifter figure, this one just had a solitary giant beast. It was not intuitive, but this was another card in that cycle. The card is more of a commander card and sees play in about half of Experiment Kraj decks according to EDH Rec, since Thornling has a myriad of useful activated abilities. Aetherling was an occasional control finisher in its standard format. It existed in decks full of removal and wanted to drop a hard to deal with bomb in the late game. The general rule of thumb was that if you did play it, play it in the main board. It was great game one against the control mirror, but didn't do a lot out of the sideboard. It was too expensive and low impact to see play in modern, however. Despite that, many people try to fit Aetherling into their modern decks as finishers. The issue is that there are much better 6 drops that require much less maintenance to keep alive. I have my own theories about the last card in this cycle. The white one costs only 3 mana and is very aggressive like most white creatures being a 3-3 three, three for 3. It can also protect itself so it keeps heading on back. The green one is a beefy 4-4 four, four for 5 that can stomp in with trample and haste and protect itself with indestructibility. The red one is a 5 drop that suits red well. It's big and splashy and does decent work as a mid-range value creature to follow up burn spells. The blue ones in typical fashion are high cost and have less than desirable combat stats but protect themselves very well. They are great control deck finishers because they get through for a lot of damage and can protect themselves from removal. So obviously all of these cards fit their colors very well. So we have some trends to work from. Each card has the same buffing ability, so that's a given. They also each have a way to protect themselves. Except for Thornling, each has the ability to be both an attacker and a blocker in the same turn cycle, with vigilance or untap effects. And then, the last ability is usually something on color. So that being said, here is my design for the black version of the card. I'm going to call it Darkling. It's going to cost 2 and 2 black. Of course it is a creature shapeshifter. I have it as a 2-4, and for 1 black, you can untap Darkling and lose one life, give it death touch until end of turn, or the next time it dies this turn, return to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control, or pay one generic to give it plus one minus one or minus one plus one until end of turn. Do you think the Black Morphling will be any different than this? What are you hoping to get out of it? And when do you think we'll finally see it? It's been 20 years since this cycle started. How much longer will it go? Thanks so much for watching this history of Morphling cards. If you want to see more videos like this, please let me know by liking and commenting below. Until then, I'll see you all in the next video.